This is what the believer in Christ has, everlasting union with God. And this is the good news. Where else can you hear this good news? Whatever faith has good news. This is, as Mark says, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Word or the Son of God. Because the Word of God and the Son of God are interchangeable terms. When God spoke the worlds into existence, He spoke through His Son. We are told that God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke unto our fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by His Son. God has spoken unto us in these last days by His Son, whom He has made heir of all things, by whom also He made the worlds. The Son of God, who is the brightness of God's glory and the express image, the express character of God's person. That's why Jesus Christ said, He that has seen me has seen the Father. So why do you say, show us the Father? Because Jesus Christ was the veil of God. God was veiled in that human flesh. And those who really see Jesus Christ as he is, they'll give up everything to follow him. Because they know how wonderful he is. He is the wonderful counsellor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of whose government and peace there shall be no end. That's who Jesus Christ is. And when you know him, when you know who you are following, you wouldn't follow anybody else for all the money in the world. You see, the Antichrist, what does he do? He bows down to money. When the devil says, I'll give you all the world and all the power and all the glory of all the nations. The Antichrist says, yes, I'll take it. But Jesus Christ said, because it was all his anyway. He said, get thee behind me, Satan. Because Satan wanted worship from Jesus Christ. He said, it's God alone who is to be worshipped. Him alone shalt thou serve. And so Satan, Satan in the lake of fire will acknowledge Jesus Christ is Lord. But it's too late, it's too late. You see, Satan, that's why he defends Satan. Because he's a Satanist. That's why. And he knows, he knows that Satan has been defeated. He knows that for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So why worship the devil when the devil's works have been destroyed? It doesn't make sense, does it? Gods don't exist. Can you prove that? Then why this? Jesus Christ came to show the existence of God. Jesus Christ came to reveal God to us. You're just repeating. No man has seen God at any time. No man has seen God. The only begotten Son of God, who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. That's why you need to come to Jesus Christ in order to know God. Otherwise you'll stay in your unbelief. You'll stay shaking your head and arguing till kingdom come. But you're not happy. You're not happy. You're happy, actually. You're happy being dead in sin. You're happy in a world where you think this world is all there is. But we're told in the writing of the beloved Apostle Paul that if in this life only we have hope, in God, we are of all men most miserable. But he said, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man, since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. As in Adam, all die. So in Jesus Christ, the second man from heaven, all are made alive. And we have been made alive and I know the life of God in me. And I've known it for 40 years. And that's why I don't turn back because God holds me. I don't hold God. God holds me. And if I would go this way or that way, God brings me back again. Because the shepherd gives his life for the sheep. 
He has authority to lay it down. He has authority to take it up again. And that's why my great shepherd, Jesus Christ, he is the one. You don't know any joy until you know the joy of sins forgiven. Until you know that you have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The devil tried to lie to our first parents, saying, has God said? So the devil always questions the Holy Bible. He always questions the Old and New Testaments of the Bible. That's why you hear the Mohammedans arguing against the Bible. They don't talk about their own religion because they've got nothing to talk about. But they're always arguing against the Bible, as are the Satanists, as are the atheists. Let God be true, but every man a liar. And we know that that's a true statement. Every man is a liar. Have you never told a lie? Of course you have. And therefore, you need to come to Jesus Christ who said, I am the truth. In fact, Jesus Christ, before Pontius Pilate, when Pontius Pilate said, what is truth? Do you think Pontius Pilate was speaking Latin? Do you think he spoke Latin? I think he spoke Latin. I think he was speaking in Latin. And, I said, and the words in the Latin for what is truth are quid est veritas. Quid est veritas. And if you make an anagram of quid est veritas, you get est vir qui ad est. And actually that means is the one who's standing here. That's what est vir qui ad est means. So the anagram of what is truth is the one standing here. Because Jesus Christ is the truth. And he came to bear witness to the truth. And Jesus Christ said, everyone that is of the truth goes on hearing my voice, present continuous. It doesn't mean you hear the voice of God once and then you forget about it. It means you go on cleaving to the word of God, the word of the testimony of the Holy Bible, and you shall never perish. Jesus Christ said, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hands. So you're secure in Jesus Christ. You're secure in the arms of the Lord. And Jesus Christ is the arm of the Lord. When you read of the arm of the Lord, the mighty arm of God, that is Jesus Christ coming to do the work of God in a world full of unbelief, a world full of idolatry, a world that is rapidly being discolored and multicolored. You know that, do you know that there are migrants, and I'm not against migrants, but do you know that there are migrants who are in hotels? You can't even book a hotel. A friend of mine tried to book a hotel room and he couldn't because all the migrants were filling the hotel. And the plan, the pandemic is to spread throughout the world. The pandemic is to spread atheism to spread all the world's peoples, to spread them throughout the world, so there's an erosion of all distinctions between people. Erosion of the beauty of culture. You have beautiful things in Indian culture. You have beautiful things in English culture. You have beautiful things in all the cultures of the world. Greek culture. A beautiful thing. The Greek Parthenon. And so you have beautiful things in all cultures. And culture is beautiful. It's not to be got rid of. But there is a spirituality about man. Not just a materialism. And we are being told that we're just material robots. That's what they want to make you. So that you don't even think. They want to take away God from your thinking. That's the purpose of international communism. To take God away from the thinking of man. And so man doesn't believe anything. And then the state has got man exactly where he wants him. Well, we have an individuality. And there is a spirituality. There is a spirituality about human beings. And most people in this world, they are spiritually dead. You're spiritually dead until Jesus Christ brings you alive. Because those of us who know the resurrection and the life, and we do, we know, we, we know what it was to be dead in sin, following after our lusts and our pleasures. We know that life. We're not doing it anymore. We've repented. But we also know a life 
in the spirit which you don't know because you don't know the Holy Ghost. You don't know the, the power of the Holy Spirit that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead. You don't know that power. And you're so denying, you're saying, I'm a blind man, but I don't, I don't believe it. It's not true. It's not true. I'm a blind man, and I believe everybody's blind like me. There is a spirit. There is the spirit of Christ. The spirit of Christ is what Jesus Christ sends into his people to make them alive, to quicken us. We are quickened by the Holy Ghost. And that means you love the Word of God because when the Spirit of God gave us the Word of God, that Word of God was God-breathed. It was breathed by the Holy Ghost. And so when you're quickened by the Holy Ghost, you love the Word of God because that's the Holy Spirit who inspired, who breathed the Word of God. And even those of you who are Muslim, you know that the Spirit of God is eternal. The breath of God is eternal. You know that the Word of God is eternal. You know that the don't get distracted by the Satanists. You know, you know that you know the Word of God is eternal. So that makes Jesus Christ eternal because He's the Word that was in the beginning with God. That makes the Spirit of God eternal because the Holy Spirit is the breath of God. That makes God eternal because he's the eternal God from everlasting to everlasting. So you haven't got three gods. You've got God the Father, God the Word, and God the breath. And you have to be born again of the breath of God if you're going to understand this Bible. Otherwise, you can't understand it. The natural man. Who wrote it? very clear. God wrote it. God wrote the book. God spoke. In English. Words. Not in English. What language? The prophets that spoke to Israel, they spoke in Hebrew. So do you Hebrew. have the do you have the original Bible? This is translated out of the original. Can I see the original? Go and go and look in the British Museum. It doesn't exist. It does. It, it does. doesn't. Yes, there are translations. There are translations of the original. There are fragments of papyri in the British Museum, in the British Library. And you can check them out. So have the you, Bible have you, have you and the Bible, the those those parchments have not changed from hundreds of years ago to today. The same message. The same message. It's the same word. That's why, that's why we can trust in the word of God. And that, that's why you need the breath of God to bring this word alive to you. But you can remain in your darkness. If you remain in your darkness, that's up to you. But when the breath of God comes and shows you God's word to be true, you'll be completely changed. You won't carry on in your sin anymore. What's you won't, sin, what's sin you won't carry on what's loving. What man do I worship? I worship God. Well, Jesus Christ was worshipped and he never turned he away worship. worship. He worshipped. He was worshipped. He worshipped. No, he was Read worship. your Bible. He went down when he didn't know if you it was read, the season you, of the fruit. You read the Bible. When he didn't that know if it was the season of the fruit. you don't know the Bible. I do know Because the Bible. Jesus Christ was worshipped. He worshipped Thomas, when he saw the hands the nail prints in the hands and the feet. He worshipped Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about He's, what people did. What no, did this Jesus is his do? disciple. This is why his apostle. He, why did he his apostle, why when did he... Jesus Christ revealed himself to Thomas, he why? said, does a spirit have flesh and bones as you see me have? And he touched that's, and he said, my Lord great. and my God. But and if, he worshipped him. Jesus why did God, he worship him? Because Jesus, Jesus God, Christ why did is he Lord. Worship God? That's why Thomas worshipped him. Very and he question. said, my Lord and my God. Literally, the words were in the Greek, the Lord God. mine, the God mine. No, you see, God. this no, man, he also worshipped this God. This man if he wants God, to try and make out that Jesus Christ is just a man. He's the eternal word of God. That's why you need to worship him. Go back to China and tell the Communist Party that Jesus Christ is the eternal Son of God. You need to tell them. You know, they're spies. All the Chinese people who go back to China, they have to spy for the Communist government or they're incarcerated if they don't. We'll go back to China and tell them the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And when Jesus Christ appeared to Thomas, why did Thomas I mean, worship him when he saw the nail prints in the hands and the feet and the side? Why did he worship him? Why would you worship a man who's just got marks of nails in his hands and feet? Why would you worship him? Well, because Jesus Christ, when he appeared to Moses and he said, I've heard the cries of the children of Israel and their Egyptian oppressors who are oppressing them. 
with slavery in Egypt and I am come down to deliver them. And he said, when God said to Moses, behold the hand, behold the nail. That's what the Hebrew letters mean. Yod hey, vav hey. Hey means behold, look. Behold that. Hey, yod, yod hey is hand. Hand behold. Vav is piercing or nail. Nail behold. So when Moses had that revelation at the burning bush, I am that I am. Yod hey, vav hey. It was Jesus Christ coming to him. It was a theophany, a theophania, as a, a Greek friend will tell you. It was a Christophania to Moses at the burning bush. I am that I am. Behold the hand, behold the nail. That's what God was saying to Moses. So Moses worshipped before the Son of God who had come to save the, Egypt, the children of Israel from Egypt. And they were saved. And how were they saved? They were saved through the shedding of the blood of the Passover lamb. Can the blood of animals take away sins? No, but it was speaking of Christ our Passover, who was coming to shed his own blood for the covering of sin, to put away sin, to deliver you from the penalty and power of sin. That's why Jesus Christ came to destroy the works of the devil, to destroy him that had the power of death. And who had the power of death? And why are people frightened? They're frightened of death. They're frightened of dying. There's no fear of death if you know Jesus Christ. Because you know where you're going. Yes, I know where I'm going. I am assured, I'm more sure of where I'm going than that Martin is even standing there at Hyde Park, Speaker's Corner. I am that sure because the Holy Spirit and the Word of God give you the assurance. And there's no doubt, no doubt in my mind. And however much the devil makes you doubt, Jesus Christ is the eternal Son of God. Paul the Apostle said he was declared to be the Son of God with power by the resurrection of the dead. And so the Anastasis, wonderful thing if you call your daughter Anastasia, it means resurrection. The resurrection of the dead is what we see in Jesus Christ. And no man has ascended up into heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man who is in heaven. When Solomon, in the words of Agur, asked that question, who has ascended into heaven or descended? Jesus Christ answered it. No man has ascended up into heaven, but he that came down from heaven first, the Son of Man who is in heaven. Because Jesus Christ was speaking of the new birth. Who has held the wind in his fist? Read it in Proverbs chapter 30, the Proverbs of Solomon. Who has held the wind in his fist? Well, only the Son of God. Jesus Christ said, The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh or whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. The wind. And so the wind, the waters. What is his name? What is his son's name? If thou canst tell what his name is, Yahweh. His son's name is Yeshua. Jesus Christ. He is the Son of God. He is the Son of God. You've been lied to from birth. God has no son. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I'll read it once more. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Repent ye and believe the gospel. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's who he is. And it doesn't give you any other explanation. You have to believe on him as the Son of God. As the word that proceeded forth and came from God, the Kalimatullah. You've got to believe in the word that created all things. The word that became flesh in the humanity of Jesus Christ for the putting away of sin. That word that went back where it was before to the Father. This is the same word that we preach to you today. Jesus Christ, the word of the living God, the son of the living God. Read the Bible and you'll read the son of God from Matthew to Revelation. You'll read it in Proverbs 30. What is his name? What is his son's name? If thou canst tell, Psalm 2, kiss the son 
lest he be angry and you perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. So the wrath of Jesus Christ, the wrath of the Son is coming on this world. It's coming sooner than later. That's why you need to believe. You need to believe and repent of your sin. I used to say the same as you. I used to say exactly the same thing. I was once in ignorance myself. And until you see, until you are given spiritual eyes to see, you'll remain blind. You see, the people who, when Jesus had healed that man who was born blind, and he said, do you believe on the Son of God? He said, who is he, Lord, that I should believe in? Him? He said, it's he who is speaking to you. And he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. And Jesus then said, For judgment I am come into this world, that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. And then the religious people, they turned to Jesus and said, Are we blind also? He said, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you think you see, your sin remains. What a terrible thing it is to be blind and not even to know you're blind. That's the worst condition to be in. To be blind and not to know you're blind. To think that everybody else is blind and that's the normality. It's not the normality. The normality is to be brought alive from the dead. The normality is to be brought into spiritual union with God the Father, through God the Son, by God the Holy Spirit. Amen. You need to repent.